Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Ed Coughlin, Director of Trader Services at NASDAQ, to discuss the market's resiliency and pivot to a virtual environment, as well as his 2021 outlook for market structure. Ed, it's great to see you again. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And 2020 was an unprecedented year in the markets for investors as the ecosystem's infrastructure and people were put to the test. How would you categorize the market's resiliency and pivot to this virtual environment? Um, you know, I, I would say very well, you know, given obviously, you know, the benefit of hindsight and, and to see what, what happened in the spring and to see where we are now in the markets. Um, if, if I look back at the sell-off, um, and, I, and I've been around a long time, I, I, this sell-off was different. You know, if you look at the sell-off was driven not only by a fear of a loss of financial well-being, but a fear of kind of personal well-being and, and personal health. So it really drove you know, you know, massive volatility, you know, all throughout the spring, both, you know, on the downside and then subsequently, you know, on the upside. And, you know, when the exchanges, you know, have a function, um, you know, to be able to provide a service to, 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 to allow capital to form, but more importantly, it's about the, the uptime in the exchange and the reliability of the exchange platform. And, and I truly believe that, you know, all participants in the exchange ecosystem did a really good job and performed really well in allowing market participants to, you know, buy and sell at a moment's notice, you know, w without virtually a hiccup. I mean, I'm sure you read about, you know, platforms out there that had trouble, you know, handling capacity or price action or slowness. Uh, that wasn't the issue on the exchanges. Um, the exchanges performed, you know, really well during that period. How have the recent structural changes with market-wide circuit breakers helped protect global markets from risk? Um, well, well if, you, if you look at, you know, uh, you know, and, and we've seen this time and again, you know, you know, occasionally the markets, you know, have become so efficient and they've become so fast um, that sometimes, you know, they need a break and, and you need the ability and, and people have recognized over time for markets to take a pause, you know, to take a breather um, so that, you know, you can have a moment of sanity come back into the market instead of maybe a, a moment of irrationality uh, be in the market. And that the pauses have worked. I mean, if you look at, you know, in March, um, we had four market-wide circuit breaker events. Um, after each, you know, of those events, there's an auction that occurs. And certainly looking back at them, um, you would say that the reopening auctions after those volatility events, you know, were orderly. They attracted buyers to come back into the market. Uh, they acted as stabilizing agents in the market. Um, liquidity providers came back in. Certainly NASDAQ, you know, and our terrific ER team have produced evidence that there were more um, limit up, limit down halts, you know, after market-wide circuit breaker reopening events, you know, which in essence, you know, is showing that, you know, the markets are paying attention, um, giving that five minute breather or, or in the case of a limit up, limit down halt or a 15 minute breather in the case of market-wide circuit breakers um, kind of did its job um, in the aftermath of all of that. Certainly, you know, it's, it's nice to look back, um, you know, over history and, and see how did it work. Um, the industry has gotten together and, you know, formed a market-wide circuit breaker task force and has reviewed the events, you know, of, um, you know, in the spring with regards to market volatility. And, it, and it's always, you know, good to look. Did it work? Were there any unintended consequences? Um, and while the review is ongoing, the um, initial, um, you know, interpretation of events and observation of those events would suggest that market-wide circuit breakers did in fact work. Um, they did attract liquidity. Um, you know, there was, you know, or there were no unintended consequences, you know, to halting the market. I think everyone agrees it was a little clunky um, or a little odd that, you know, we opened at 9.30 and, and on a couple of occasions anyway, um, we kind of halted right away. Um, but certainly the, the, the observation would be there was no unintended harm or no consequences that we didn't expect out of that volatility. And Ed, to wrap up, what's your outlook for 2021 from a market structure standpoint? Um, so the, you know, if, if you look at it, I mean, there's new exchange entrants. I mean, NASDAQ always embraces competition. We're always looking to make markets better. Um, you know, from NASDAQ's perspective, um, certainly on our plates, we're looking to, um, you know, increase the flexibility to participate in the opening cross. We filed changes, um, you know, to or we filed with the SEC to make those changes where we're going to, uh, similar to the close, allow people in, in a more guaranteed way to participate in the opening imbalances once we publish them. So whether they want to put a market on open order, a limit on open order, 
Um, it'll allow them greater flexibility and more certainty to trade there. Um, we're exploring additional ways um, to trade um, at the closing price, you know, um, you know, with the closing auction that takes place. I mean, obviously, you know, if, if you look at the closing auction, there's a, it's a huge demand um, from all kinds of market participants to trade at that price. So we're looking at ways to add flexibility there. And then lastly, I'd say we're looking at kind of the ETP space or the ETF space and looking at, you know, adding additional protections there, you know, where warranted to ensure price protection. You know, when I look at the, like the big picture of things, you know, the goal of markets itself is to provide a way, you know, to have capital formation. But then subsequent to that, we need to make sure that from a marketplace, you know, that we have rules and protection in place to ensure that we, um, you know, are rules and protections that ensure that investors are protected and liquidity providers, you know, are looked after so that there are, you know, fair rules of the road. There's confidence that exchange systems work and that liquidity providers can step in, which certainly seems to have been the case in the spring. Um, and while, you know, through, through my lifetime, you know, we, we had four in March and we hadn't had any, <laughs> you know, you know, going or any in the certain uh, in, in the current, um, you know, construct of market wide circuit breakers, you know, I hope we don't have them again in the future. But, you know, if we were to have them, you know, investors should have the confidence that it's been tried, it's tested, you know, and it's worked. All right, I'd appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.